According to FBI documents uncovered by the San Diego Union Tribune, anti-fascist activists were seeking to buy weapons from a Mexico-based cartel to stage an armed disruption of U.S. southern border operations. Now, this news comes around the time we heard that a far-left extremist in California was planning to bomb a rally. Now, it's hard to determine if this person really is far left. It's complicated. But based on the story, it would seem that was a part of their motivation. The FBI said their biggest fear in the circumstance was the rapid mobilization from radicalization to violence. Aside from these two incidents, we're seeing the rhetoric escalate dramatically. It was not that long ago that a CBS drama called The Good Fight had a main character break the fourth wall and tell the audience they need to punch people based on their speech to enforce the Overton window. Today, let's take a look at what happened with this FBI document story. We'll take a look at what happened in California and talk about the escalation of rhetoric and potential for violence. But before we get started, make sure you follow me on Minds at minds.com slash Timcast. I'm hoping to break 100,000 subscribers with your help, but more importantly, it is possible that I cover a story much too controversial, and then maybe YouTube doesn't like what I'm saying. It's always better to have you follow me somewhere that is substantially less likely to censor me. So again, minds.com slash Timcast. And if you want to support this video, just share it on social media to help spread the news. From the San Diego Union Tribune, feds investigating alleged armed disruption attempt at U.S.-Mexico border in December. The story says, when federal law enforcement officials last year began collecting dossiers on mostly American journalists, activists, and lawyers in Tijuana involved with the migrant caravan, one part of their investigation focused on an alleged plot by a drug cartel to sell guns to protesters, according to a Federal Bureau of Investigation report. A December 18, 2018 document from the FBI obtained by the Union Tribune specifies an alleged plan for activists to purchase guns from a Mexico-based cartel associate known as Cobra Commander, or Ivan Reibling. The protesters wanted to stage an armed rebellion at the border, the FBI reported to dozens of federal law enforcement agencies in the U.S. and Mexico. The unclassified report was provided to the Union Tribune on the condition that the person providing it would not be named and with the request that the entire document not be shared online because of the ongoing nature of the investigation. The document warns of anti-fascist activists that planned to disrupt U.S. law enforcement and military security operations at the U.S.-Mexico border. Two additional law enforcement officials confirmed the investigation is ongoing, although no one has been charged. Unclassified means information can be released to people without a security clearance. But the document was also labeled law enforcement sensitive, which means it was intended to be seen only by those in law enforcement. This is an information report, not finally evaluated intelligence, the six-page report states. Receiving agencies are requested not to take action based on this raw reporting without prior coordination with the FBI. However, it would seem that two people named in the report are disputing it, saying it's untrue and illogical. Evan Duke said he never met Reibling and that Reibling was not someone he would have associated with. Reibling also said the accusations by the FBI's report are illogical. It doesn't make any sense that someone from the United States would purchase guns in Mexico. And the Hondurans certainly didn't bring money to buy guns. It doesn't make any sense. In fact, it's extremely absurd to say the Hondurans wanted to attack the United States at the border, said Reibling. But I want to make sure I clarify that's not what the report was asserting. It was asserting that anti-fascist activists were trying to disrupt actions and operations at the border. Not that the Honduran migrants were trying to do that, but let's continue. A few names included in the FBI report overlap with names included in a secret database of people being monitored by Customs and Border Protection and Homeland Security Investigations, originally reported by NBC San Diego and Telemundo 20. However, the database includes many others not in the FBI's report, and it remains unclear why those people, mostly American journalists, activists, and attorneys, were targeted and monitored. The FBI's report is a group of activists in Tijuana supporting the migrant caravan. Quote, were encouraged to bring personally owned weapons to the border, and the group also intended to purchase weapons from a Mexico-based cartel associate known as Cobra Commander, aka the Mexican Rambo, and smuggle the weapons into the United States. Several activists involved in the migrant caravan said the accusation that they would try to purchase weapons in Mexico is especially absurd, given that buying guns in the United States is easy and illegal. Reibling said he was never detained or interrogated by the FBI about his involvement with the migrant caravan. He said he took no part in trying to sell guns to anyone and that he's not a cartel member. I am not cartel. I don't sell drugs. I don't sell arms, said Reibling. I'm a revolutionary, a man who believes in his ideals, and I'm going to defend Mexico. The FBI's report says Duke was working with Reibling and others not just to procure weapons, 
but to help set up camps to train activists to become community defense militias, also known as autodensas. Organizers planned for the camps to be used as staging platforms from which five-person units would form to train anarchists in fighting, combat, and conducting reconnaissance, and then launch to disrupt U.S. government operations along the border, the report states. It's entirely possible the FBI report is incorrect. Maybe they were acting on tips. Maybe the information isn't confirmed. They didn't arrest these people. There are no charges. So we're not even near innocent until proven guilty. They're not even charged with a crime at this point, and they've denied it. Now, the FBI investigation is ongoing, so we don't know how things will play out. But I think it's important to keep everyone calm because no one has been arrested. But we did see this story yesterday as well. Army veteran arrested in terror plot in California designed to inflict mass casualties. The story says the individual had written online posts and said in conversations with an FBI source that he supported violent jihad. According to the Justice Department, Domingo wanted to seek retribution for attacks against Muslims. After the mass shooting at mosques in Christchurch, New Zealand in March, Domingo wrote in a social media post that there must be retribution. The story adds that he had also spoken with the operative about possible targets, including Jewish people, police officers, churches, and a military base, according to the affidavit. Officials said the Army veteran also considered carrying out a drive-by shooting with an AK-47-style assault rifle he owned. According to prosecutors, Domingo had declared his fidelity to Islam on March 2nd. Our biggest fear is this was a rapid mobilization from radicalization to violence, FBI special agent in charge Ryan Young told reporters. We get asked what keeps us up at night. This is what does. It's not black and white to determine whether or not this individual is far left or not. When it comes to far right violence, Christians will be referred to as far right. This individual recently converted to Islam, but also opposed U.S. military action. I can only align that with more left wing groups. And the reason I would say it's far left extremism is because anti-war American activists on the left aren't calling for violence against any group of people necessarily. Some of them may be, but for the most part, they're regular people. This individual was particularly extreme, converted to a religion, and then targeted a far-right rally in California. So again, it's not so simple to say far-left or far-right, because the media often does this, but based on his perception of the U.S., the actions he was taking and who he was targeting, far-left maybe makes the most sense in this context. Now, the first story with the FBI documents, nothing is confirmed true, so we don't know what's happening. And the story with the army veteran, people will argue whether he was far left or not. But the story is made worrying by the escalation of rhetoric. This story was written on Vox.com, which is associated with more far left politics. Back in August, Antifa clashes with police and journalists in Charlottesville and DC. This was the second Unite the Right event, which had almost no attendees. But Antifa still attacked journalists and police. We saw this story the year before. The Boston rally exposed the left's intolerance of free speech. At this event, a video was going viral of an old woman being dragged on the ground as an anti-fascist activist attempted to steal her American flag. I highlight those stories to bring up the context. The first story from the FBI presents a real law enforcement challenge. If they truly believe this is what's happening, if this was happening, then anti-fascist activists are seeking weapons to actually stage a disruption of U.S. border operations to train people according to the documents. That wouldn't surprise me. There have been trainings. There have been armed left-wing groups patrolling streets. There have been many stories about the rise of the armed left. This one from the New York Times says, threats from the right inspire a new left-wing gun culture. In this story from July 2017, we learned about Redneck Revolt, probably the most notorious armed left-wing group. The story says, the armed left-wing group wants to stamp out fascism. Over on my Subverse channel, we published a story in February about the armed left, the Stone Mountain shutdown, where we can see many people with rifles and workers of the world flags patrolling. There's nothing inherently wrong with individuals exercising their right to bear arms. This is just another grain of sand making a heap. We've seen the escalation of violence. We've seen the escalation of rhetoric. We have seen armed patrol groups. None of this is to diminish what we see from right-wing groups at all, but to highlight what we're seeing from the FBI, what we're seeing from this escalation in California, and even from mainstream television to say that there is a growing threat of left-wing violence it may not be as bad or extreme as other groups, but the point is it does exist. A few weeks ago on a show called The Good Fight, they had a segment called The Overton Window in which this character breaks the fourth wall, talking to the camera, explaining you do need to attack people unprovoked. 
While he was specifically referring to punching Nazis unprovoked, he said, it's like Overton's window. That's the term for which ideas are tolerated in public discourse. Well, Overton's window doesn't mean S unless it comes with some enforcement. So yeah, this is enforcement. It's time to punch a few Nazis. While I can understand the emotion and sentiment behind what he's saying, we have to recognize that it's wrong to attack people unprovoked. At the event in California, the far right never showed up. This army veteran was planning to bomb people. And if he carried out his plan, it's entirely likely he would have just hurt left-wing activists. So thank goodness the FBI was able to stop him. The other issue is that the left will call everyone a Nazi and everyone alt-right, and then run-of-the-mill conservatives get attacked at these events like we saw in Berkeley. But again, it's made worse by stories like this. Chris Cuomo saying Antifa is a good cause. On the same day we heard from FBI documents that anti-fascist activists were seeking weapons to attempt an assault on the southern border, Andrew Cuomo actually defended Antifa as a good cause. While he did say they're not perfect, there are problems with them, it's not a good cause. It's a violent insurgency. These people call themselves revolutionaries and they seek to hurt people. These are people who seek to use violence to secure political goals. That's terrifying and dangerous. And no, it's not a good cause. The rhetoric is escalating. The TV is pushing this. And then we see these stories on the same day. I certainly feel like things are going to get worse. And it's frustrating because I've said it for the past two years. Now we're hearing the story from the feds. It happened in December. They were planning this. Maybe they weren't. Maybe it's wrong. We, we, it's not confirmed information. Nobody was arrested. I want to make sure that's clear. But I kind of feel I, I lean towards it's probably true. If the FBI is still investigating and that's what they believe, I'm going to lean in that direction. But it may be wrong. I don't know. Let me know what you think in the comments below. We'll keep the conversation going. Do you feel like things are escalating and getting worse? Were things just calming down because of winter? It's getting warmer now. We usually see violence and escalation in the warmer months. So I certainly hope things don't get out of hand. You can follow me on Minds at TimCast. Stay tuned. New videos every day at 4 p.m. And I'll have more videos on my second channel, youtube.com slash TimCastNews at 6 p.m. Thanks for hanging out and I'll see you all next time.